gets extremely strong in Medina. And uh, let me see if I can pick that out here where we get it. Just a, oh yes, uh, yeah, do not confound truth with falsehood, what I just said, that it's been corrupted by falsehood. Now one of the groups that I told you about that I think actually did penetrate the Arabian Peninsula and uh, was uh, uh, thrown out of early Christianity as heretical were the Ebionites. That's based on a Hebrew word called the poor. Poor do, you know, the poor, that's what they were called, the, the poor. And a lot of monastic orders called themselves the little sisters of the poor or the little son of the poor ones. And there are all kinds of movements in Christianity that pick up this designation of the poor, poor ones of piety. The Dead Sea Scrolls call themselves the poor ones of piety and other, and other logos of that kind. Uh, they had the idea that there were false passages in scripture. They already had that idea from the second to the fifth century. It's in their work that there are false passages in original scripture. And I think that's Muhammad has inherited that air in the sort of two of the cap. Do not confound truth with falsehood. You've got to find the false passages in scripture and get rid of them. Okay. But he does acknowledge that the children of Israel, 47, are uh, the prior group. And uh, remember the favor wherewith you were favored. But still guard yourself against that day when no soul will ought about any other. What day is that? The day of judgment. And again, as I'm trying to impress upon you, I repeat myself, but I think it's important. When you're bouncing the basketball at the foul line, and uh, you are cross yourself, as many uh, basketball players we see do, before they shoot the foul shot. Is that going to help you, according to Muhammad's view? Well, it may discipline you, but how, is, it gonna, is Jesus going to intervene for you? No, no, there's no intercession, either from saints or saviors. It's all your own work. And uh, I don't want to be cruel to any Christians in the room. My Muslims will be happy if I'm cruel to others. They may think I'm being cruel to them. I don't mean to be cruel to anybody, but I, mean, I have to be very honest. For Muhammad, your religion doesn't work. And uh, Jesus is not going to save anybody. I know it's hard. Uh, in fact, I told you about the experience I had in Hyde Park in London, where I, uh, where I met these, uh, these people who, uh, Hyde Park in the old days was where people would stand on uh, soapboxes and a Christian preacher was preaching about how Jesus saves. And this audience of uh, mostly probably people from Pakistan or elsewhere were yelling out, you lie, you lie, because you can do whatever you want in Hyde Park. You can heckle people and do what you like, and they were, I was just laughing at myself because I knew what they were talking about. You lie, you lie. Everything he said, he yelled out. He was a liar. It was a lie. And uh, it some, to some extent it, uh, is, reflects this attitude here. There is no intercession that day on which no soul ought about another. Only your own works will help you. Okay? Star works righteousness. And as the letter of James, if you haven't read it, says in the New Testament, faith and works working together. And that we'll see it here. We've already seen it. We'll see it also about four or five times here. Now, as an example of this, let's talk to the Jews, because the Jews are the people giving me trouble here in Medina. Let's show them their own books that they should understand. Look, children of Israel, I favored you. Look, 49, we delivered you from Pharaoh's folk. Exodus. So we've done Genesis, now we're on to Exodus, as I said. And we brought you through the sea and rescued you and drowned the book of Pharaoh in your sight. And they were afflicting you with dreadful torment. So there. Does he know, uh, does he know the book of Exodus? Yeah. How does he, what do you think? Does he know it better than most of you people know it? I think so. I mean, there's probably only about five or ten people in this room that could probably stand up and acknowledge to him about what he knows in the book of Exodus. Uh, you know, I don't think he knows it better than me, frankly. Uh, I'd be willing to go head to head, head toe to toe with him, but you know, I'm just a nasty guy. Uh, but uh, that's me. But uh, for other folk, I mean, uh, 
I don't know how many of you guys are willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him on these points. How many feel they know as much as he does about Exodus here? None of you? Come on, don't be shy. Some of you must feel you know it. Exodus. Exodus. That's where Moses was. Um, okay, that's it now. I got you. You can't beat him on this one. He's right there. He wouldn't even question that's where he would know. I'm just kidding. Um, I think I could deal with that, but I hope some of the others have good. She thinks she can. That's where Moses did what? Well, actually, that's where the story started. Moses, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers. Yeah, well, Moses. what's in that? Well, he says Exodus here. Exodus is basically when he was talking about how his family, his mother was an Egyptian. Not Egypt, but a Jewish, was 